Welcome to the show. I have a special guest today, Rory Gale from Harper Prince. But uh, before we start, get, uh, start with the show, I'm going to mention a couple of sponsors that I, I have. Uh, Har- uh, CrossFit Hartford is our first actual sponsor. Um, CrossFit is a great program. Uh, I'm a very uh, busy person. I'm a graphic designer full time. I'm going to grad school. I have two kids. so And I love to work out and I love fitness. Yeah. And CrossFit is probably the most uh, efficient training program out there. And if you're interested in something like that, I would suggest you check out CrossFit Hartford because they're the most knowledgeable coaching staff mm. in the area. Wow. So check out CrossFit Hartford at CrossFitHartford.com. And another thing I want to mention is the uh, Hartford Adobe Group, which is a networking group that I'm part of. Um, it's run by Scott Reynolds, and that's a networking um, group for creative professionals and designers, students, or people who want to become designers. They meet once a uh, month up in Manchester, and they have speakers that speak about uh, various design or communications topics, uh, tutorials on Adobe software. So if you're interested in checking that out, that's at uh, Hartford Meetup, actually meetup.com forward slash Hartford Adobe. Mm, so, sounds good. Yeah, that's actually pretty fun. Yeah. That's a good like networking thing to do. Yeah. I, well, and you're always like designing and you have this one little hiccup and to be able to bounce that off somebody. Yeah. And, it's cool because you, then you meet other people that work in di- different agencies mm-hmm. or different like um, job fields. And, you know, somebody's always got like, I need a help with something or we're looking for help. Or, yeah. So it's a, it's a good networking tool. So. Cool. Yeah. But back to our show and our Woo. special guest, uh, Rory Gale. Thank you so much for being on the Why, show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I know you're super busy with uh, Hartford Prince here. I mean, here. Aren't, we all, aren't we all? I don't have two kids, and I'm not going to grad school, and I don't do CrossFit. So. <laughs> yeah, I do way too much. Like, way too much stuff. People always ask me, like, how do you do it? I'm like, I don't know. I yeah. don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. Not yeah. <laughs> so you guys are really busy. You have a couple events coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, not this Saturday, next Saturday, June 27th, we're hosting uh, dinner on Pratt Street, which is the street where our store is located. So um, opening up the street, putting 20 picnic tables down it. Um, inviting 160 of um, our favorite neighbors to come have a community dinner on our, um, like, I think it's one of the most beautiful streets in Hartford. Definitely. I love coming down yeah. the street. I'm like, oh, I wish I could have, like, space here. Yeah. Especially your, your space is beautiful. I love it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Have you been in the store I before? haven't, no. We met a couple years ago yeah. on a project, but you were at the... Uh, the studio yep. on um, Arbor Street, correct? Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we still have our studio space, so right in front of Real Artways. And then the store opened October of 2011, so it'll be two years in the fall. 2011? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. 20. What's this year? 2013. It's 2015. 2013. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I was like, wait. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, All I'm, those years. I know, right? Yeah. It's starting. Like, it's funny because we were talking at work today. It was like, oh. We did that project in like 2007, and somebody's like, "Oh my God, it was like it was 10 years yeah. ago." It sounds Scary. like so new, but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time's flying. Yeah, so I don't 2013. Know my bad. That's cool. And then you do like most of the printing at that location, and mm-hmm. this is the the retail. Yeah. So eventually, because we opened our storefront um, through a pilot program, so it was the city of Hartford, um, the economic development department for the state. Um, offered this program where you could secure storefront space as an artist for free for six months. Oh, cool. um, so, and then we um, were able to continue to be full uh, rent paying tenants. Oh, um, awesome. And eventually we want to merge the studio and the store and have this really um, dynamic uh, maker space so that you can, because the beauty of what we're doing, we're making things by hand. Yeah. The printmaking process mm-hmm. is, I think it's what intrigued you yeah, to definitely. work with us. Yep. Um, so we want our customers who buy a single card to be able to see the press and understand these cards are made by hand. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. It's funny because I, I love letterpress. I'm a designer and like, I, you know, we, working in like a corporate setting, you don't get to do letterpress that often because people are like, oh, well, just print it normally. It's yeah. much cheaper. And I'm like, oh, I want that, like, that feel of that, like, cotton paper yeah. and, like, the raised lettering. It's just like, it's, it's like the overall 
experience for, mm-hmm. for something. And when we had a, a chance to work with you, it was, we, we jumped at it. Yeah. So that was like a very fitting project too. Yeah. It was for like a women's center and mm-hmm. we were like, why not hire a, a female owned business mm-hmm. and, and locally, you know what I mean? We're thinking holistically about the project. Yeah. So no, that's important. And, um, it's kind of how Hartford Prince has been able to grow is because of this movement and we've all seen it, you know, nationally towards local. So everybody yep. wants to be able to support local, whether that's your farmer or your, mm-hmm. you know, the person that fixes your shoes or, but you know, they, you want to know where you're getting your products from. Right, right, right. Um, and so Harvard Prince has been able to fill this, this need where people are looking, um, to support a, a local business. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I was going to, I'm inspired by it because so many people, I feel like, especially like designers and creatives, like, are, I feel like there's this huge push for like tech mm-hmm. and like web stuff and apps. And you guys went the complete opposite yeah. back to like paper and hand making things. And I think that's awesome because yeah. like, you know, like everybody's going this way and you turn left and yeah. you, it, it seems like you guys are doing well and you're successful with it. It's, yeah, it, it, I think it's I think what we're all going to have to figure out is combining the digital and the physical and that, you know, you want to be able to have to be able to touch things and feel connected mm-hmm. in such a digital world. Right. And so yeah. Um, I, we're always challenging ourselves to like take something from your phone and make it physical and then make it digital again. And then, you know, the combination of all of that is where like the interesting things happen. Yeah. And I noticed that too, because I think I'd seen like the posters you guys did for the the farm to street Mm -hmm. on like, you know, Instagram and then like on Facebook. And then like, I went to Jerry's Artorama the other day and there was a poster there. So it's like, you make that connection. I think it's, it's kind of a cool like time right now where you Mm -hmm. can, connect with people in both ways Mm -hmm. it's really interesting yeah yeah and your stuff is beautiful anyway so it's very like eye-catching so yeah um instagram worthy uh, yeah definitely (laughs) so you started this with your two sisters Mm -hmm. correct yeah my oldest sister addy who you met she um started hartford prince in 09 that's the right year gotcha (laughs) um and at that time callie who's my other sister and I were living, working in New York and Addie started the business with money from the greater Hartford arts council. Okay. Um, and we, Hartford Prince functioned as a, a nonprofit of sorts, working with high school students, teaching them printmaking. All the students were from Hartford high and they were employed by Hartford Prince and together made artwork that promoted Hartford. Okay. And so, um, from 2009, uh, to 2012, that's how Harvard Prince operated. And during that time, both my sisters got married. Um, we, as a designer, and um, my other sister um, has a background in art history and is really into fashion. So we started collaborating. Mm-hmm. And it that's when all these light bulbs went off about us working together. And, you know, we're, we've always been a tight family unit. Um, and we're super creative and pooling our resources and talents to do this. And so we had like initial crazy business planning meetings and then just went for it. And so moved from New York, came back to Hartford and this is it. This is it. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Now, were you a designer or did you, what did Um, So I got a degree in communications and I was working um, in video production uh, for a small um, graphic design firm that did animations for um, installations. So museums, um, videos that play in Times Square. So a lot of large format um, video, which is like the stuff that you don't really think about, but it's always around you. There's a screen, you know, in a bank. And who made yeah. the content for that? Or like environmental design mm-hmm. type stuff? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cool, yeah. So I was on the management end of it, but self-taught graphic designer. Okay. So I would always stay late, pick up stuff. Sure. And it was a small firm, so they always needed extra hands. Okay. And um, that's where I dug into yeah. all the programs and um, then, you know, fell in love with it. Cool. Yeah. And then your, your other two sisters, one does like the the business side yeah so she um Callie is has this crazy art history degree fashion and costume studies she was a teacher for a long time and she does all of our bookkeeping 
bookkeeping. So she keeps the business like running. Gotcha. Yeah. And then Addie um, studied printmaking um, okay. and bookbinding and is like the love of the craft. Um, she's now a full time mom. Oh. So um, she decided to, you know, take a break for a sure. little while. Um, and since then, we've hired three full time employees. So we've really grown. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. excellent. Congratulations. Yeah. It's intense. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So um, I can't imagine like running a business with my brothers. I have I have three brothers, yeah. so I <laughs> it's it's funny. Like you always have this idea, like oh, I had an idea. We should start a business. We should yeah. get a food truck going. We should yeah. start a restaurant. But you guys like went and did it. Like what was like? Let's buy a letter press and, and yeah. start a press business. Like yeah. Um, you know, there would be conversations and it was kind of like, yeah, let's do that. But then when we actually did it, mm -hmm. that's when it was just like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Do you, guys, do you guys all get along here? Do you guys have like we do. Just um, fights in the back? <laughs> I guess the beauty of it is, you know, it can be intense and there's moments of sure uh, frustration. Yeah. But <laughs> then your family. So you like. You don't hold right. anything. Right. And the best part, and I, I'm sure you've had this with, like, coworkers that you really vibe with or, you know, talking about something to somebody mm -hmm. where they get it without you explaining in every detail. Right, yeah. So you are... Th you have the same shared history. Yep. So that means you also have the same shared, like, visual memory of, like, how something should look. Or, right, yeah. You know, yep. you kind of can think. Yeah, that's interesting because it's funny how often I even think, like, working in, like, a corporate setting and you're kind of working with strangers. And, like, so you're not – you can never really be your, like, true self. Yeah. And, like, you know, if you're frustrated with somebody, you kind of have to, like – swallow it and carry on with your day you know nobody can say what they want to say or yeah. express themselves but it must be somewhat relieving to be able to like express yourself and communicate in your natural form most of the time yeah most of the time, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure there, there yeah. are times when you yeah. can't but well and especially then with like a retail location yeah and having staff then you know i then have to shift and communicate to my sister as a per more professional you know right, like, yeah that's true dear Callie can uh, you please <laughs> follow up on the email correspondence <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> oh man I couldn't imagine what those emails would yeah. be like me and my brothers if we like started our own company it would be what would the company be I don't know <laughs> that's a problem like I don't even know what it would be hmm. probably like some construction or something yeah <laughs> who knows hammering stuff uh, yeah it's like <laughs> blowing walls down <laughs> like with sledgehammers yeah it's probably all that we'd be good at because we'd be just like fighting and smashing things yeah that could work yeah let's do that <laughs> <laughs> so do you your brothers listen to the podcast i doubt Watch it, it? No. i doubt it yeah you could give them a shout out yeah they do like their own thing yeah it's fine <laughs> i'm like the weirdo of the family who's like very like outgoing and boisterous and it happens puts up podcasts and Things like that. <laughs> it, uh, they wouldn't want to have anything to do with it, I'm sure. Yeah. So so you guys are very active in the community. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of like stuff here. Um, and you're very connected to Hartford. Mm -hmm. How, why is that? Um, so born and raised in Hartford. Okay. We grew up in the West End. And um, because our parents have always been so involved in the community, you know, since before we were born, they um, started Mo's Midtown, um, okay. which is a little diner on uh, Whitney Street. They um, have been property owners and community leaders. And um, and so that's just like ingrained in our blood. Um, and so and also because Hartford is this really unique place mm -hmm. that needs you. So right. um, having been raised in Hartford with family that um, is just um, oozing with pride, that made these children that share all of that, um, all of that love and then wanted to give back. And so right. like a big portion of what Hartford Prince is, is to 
sh- have a way for people to show pride for Hartford because that's something that we really saw was missing. Right, yeah. So, you know, you go anywhere else. You go to New York, you go to mm-hmm. Boston, you go I to... I love New York. Yeah. 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 And there's Why no, not here? Yeah. Right. So, like, you know, <coughs> now you can wear a T-shirt that has the Hartford skyline on it. And yeah. um, our small state big heart um, branding yep. is, like blown up around the state and you know we want it to go even further so right that you know connecticut becomes cool and there's this identity yeah. it's funny because i i think even growing up everyone was like oh, i hate connecticut can we get out of connecticut so it's kind of cool that you know you guys are kind of like i feel like you know kind of like leading that charge of like bringing pride to the town yeah. and, and you know this is the capital city and ultimately could could lead to the state pride you know what i mean yeah it's very interesting. I like it. I, I think that's part of like, I'm tr- with this show even like trying to network with some of the people in the area, mm-hmm. some of the small businesses, and interesting creative people that are doing the same thing you're doing, starting a small business yeah. and really relying on that like hometown pride to like, I mean ultimately that's who you're gonna yeah you're gonna market to, you're gonna sell to. Those are your clients. Well, and, and we're such a small state. I think a lot of times we look out of the state, mm-hmm. but we should we should be looking in and sure. you know because there's so much talent and, right. and interesting things going on right here. To, right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of fun, this stuff you're doing. Um, some, what are some of the, do you have any other like community programs going on now that you're involved in or? Um, so currently, well, we're really trying to um, start to sell our products to other stores and okay. get um, the small state branding um, around the state. Sure. Um, and so that's going to be a big project. Um, and then uh, Envision Fest, which is a festival that is put on um, every September by iQuilt. I don't know if you've heard of No, I haven't. So iQuilt um, is a nonprofit organization that is promoting walkability in in downtown Hartford. Okay. And so they've done a ton of amazing projects um, around arts um, and green space and um, making downtown Hartford more walkable. Um, so Envision Fest is like this festival to show how all of these projects can come to life. Um, and w- every year we do a different project. And so this year we're focusing on um, the bike community okay. um, and you know have like how bike share is this um, is taking over the nation and it, like the city bikes in New York where you can okay. rent a bike um, and so bringing that energy to Hartford oh, cool. um, so doing like a mock bike share oh. program cool yeah that's interesting yeah cool there's a printer um, I think they're out of Vermont that has a press that's pedaled by a bike. Oh, and no way. So trying to get them oh, to come. Oh, cool. Because last year we actually brought our press to Bushnell Park. Okay. Which was insane because the press weighs a ton. Yeah, I bet. A ton. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally a ton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it required um, a lot of manpower. I bet. And it was a little scary. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. But that's a good, uh, good, <laughs> good yeah. topic. But we're uh, getting close to our 20 minutes. Okay. So we'll take a break real quick. Sweet. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're back. Now, you were just talking about um, the bike share and moving the the press. Yeah. And then you were working with a a printer who was uh, a a bike-powered press. Yeah. I mean, that would be cool. Yeah. Are you going to get one of those? Um, Like people have, like, standing desks. You're going (laughs) to get, like, a a pedaling (laughs) press to promote, like, a healthy work environment. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and productivity. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's funny. Um, no, I mean, it's just the printmaking community is so beautiful because it's like the only, I don't know if it's the only industry, but it's a very collaborative okay. industry. So we were just at the National Stationery Show, which oh, cool. happens in New York at the Javits Center. It's insane. Yeah. Um, the Javits Center is about, I think it's like, five city blocks in New York. Um, so thousands of companies that are all doing exactly what we do. Oh, wow. But there is just a sense of community and people who make cards around the country, around the world, and especially the letterpress printers were all like this one big family. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. 
we're members of um, the Ladies of Letterpress, Ooh. which are all, you don't have to be women, but that's what it's <laughs> called, um, around the country that um, do printmaking. Is it, now, is that a big community? or a lot of people doing letterpress and yeah. printmaking? Is it like very it's small? A, or is it getting bigger? It, or is it had a boom, um, and it's sort of, I think that it's sort of leveling out, but okay. um, it was women that found um, printmaking through art school. Okay. And then when, you know, the teacher asks you, you know, what are you going to do? And being an artist isn't a career. Then <laughs> right. through the press, you can actually manufacture goods. Okay. So um, there's a it, there's a pretty thriving community of uh, letterpress printers, a lot of women printers um, who are doing this um, and taking this old equipment that was just sort of collecting dust right, yeah. and using it. And it's it's hilarious because there's a generation of old printers. It's, this is not sexist, but mostly men. Right, yeah. And they <laughs> look at us taking over, taking control of their machinery. And it's just like this interesting dynamic. Yeah, like, printing has been like, you um, know, a men dominated yeah. industry forever. I mean, even you look at, I remember in, in design school, our... The professor who ran it, um, Sue Vale, she would always say, like, it was a man-dominated yeah. industry. Eat, look at the names, like, the crotch and the bleed, and yeah. all these terms are so, like, masculine. And, like, I was just like if, I, if I ran it, I would never call anything the crotch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the women could do stuff like, you know, like the binding work. Right, yeah. Like the little... Sure. Yeah. She had a really funny story, like, when... Um, she she would be like one of the only art directors who would go ch on, on press checks mm -hmm. and she would be press checking like an annual report and like to be funny they would run like a hustler magazine through the press oh. while she was there <laughs> like it was pretty bad the story she yeah. would say she was a little bit older but like yeah it's pretty funny you probably get like we should do that you probably go to jail for that type of <laughs> stuff now <laughs> yeah it's funny you have this piece over here mm -hmm. and i remember i think that you guys had that highlighted I want to say, was it in, a, in an, a print magazine or on a website somewhere? That was for I a wedding, it, correct? Um, it was featured on a blog. Yeah, um, that's how that I heard of you guys. And I was like, wait, is this happening in Hartford? How did I miss this? Yeah. And I, I saw that. And I, it, since then, have you, you've been on my radar. When was that? Uh, yeah. 2012. Mm -hmm. So I remember seeing that and always had like you guys in the back of my head, in my mind yeah. when it comes to letterpress. It's I'm crazy like, how that works, though. And it's also just doing the marketing for the business it's it's so interesting that you have to somebody has to see something there's some theory about it you have mm -hmm. to see something like like a certain number of impressions yeah, they call before it before somebody will like rem even, even remember it right and it's like 12 or more yeah you know? something like that yeah I'm, i don't know the <laughs> yeah. i don't know the statistics yeah. it's probably pretty bad that i don't but but um like we bombard people with all of our social media avenues and then you know, then they finally come to the store. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So you started with your sisters. Mm -hmm. And how did that evolution to, to now with the three three employees, right? Mm -hmm. how did that unfold? Was that a long process yeah. or did that happen pretty quickly? Or um, It happened, I mean, in, it happened pretty quickly because we hired a first employee a year into business um, and you know it it was amazing because my sister's husband is a financial um, guy okay. and so he was able to crunch all of our numbers um, and give us this beautiful business plan about how Hartford Prince would grow wow. um, and so to have that yeah that's know, gotta be helpful resource was yeah really helpful um, and, you know, you could, we could do it, just the three of us, and we would sort of just have this beautiful business mm -hmm. that was small and do a lot of custom stuff, but we're, like, really ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we wanted to grow, and we want to get bigger, and yeah. we want to do more things. Sure. Why not? I mean, you guys do such good work, and, like, people should, you know, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Like, you know, I would like you said uh, the community of printers and like wanting to buy local like if i needed letterpress i would come to you guys because you guys are the local letterpress women mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so and it, i kind of like that i like i feel like there's a that it's been going on for a while but mm -hmm. that 
um, you know, I think when we probably grew up, it was more, more is better. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's totally changing to like quality over quantity. Yeah. You can see that in a lot of different places. Like there's so many different like artisans of different things like craft brewing has gotten mm -hmm. huge. Um, and other things, you know, like these local like jeans and shoes companies. I think it's really interesting. I think it's a great time for creative people to kind of like do something. Yeah. Instead of like go getting a normal job. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very re rewarding. It's hard work. Um, I bet. And then. How many hours do you guys do you put in? Uh, it's nonstop. Right. You know? But it's yours. Yeah. Like it's, it's you own yeah. it. It's yours. There's a difference be between like this, like this is yours. Yeah. Versus spending Cobb's amount of time for a faceless, heartless company that doesn't even know you exist. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why um, the hours never feel as much work because, you know, you're building something, mm -hmm. you believe in it. And you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, all the risk and all the the reward, it's always like this balancing act. And But I feel like, I don't know. The risk is, you know, things don't go well and ultimately you have to get a job. But the, the experience yeah. that you're giving yourself has got to be way better than you would have gotten if you spent the same amount of time at one job or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you could be like the ultimate like project manager or pr probably anything at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, a lot of that also has to do whoever is listening out there <laughs> <laughs> um, that Hartford is um, prime place to really do something and be able to make an impact. So the whole like idea of being a small fish, mm -hmm. um, a big fish in a small pond plays out so nicely here. And because it's untapped and there's lots sure. of resources and the community is very supportive. If you do anything and you want to do it. If you set up shop in Hartford, there's room in the, you know. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Yeah. I feel like that there's, yeah, there's something to tap into here. And that's yeah. what I'm kind of like, even with this show and trying to like, you know, tap into these like little like niche yeah. markets and people that are doing cool things. Because I don't know, you, do you guys do a lot of um, collaborations with other businesses like your street to table you have a lot of like local mm -hmm. companies do you, does that yeah, happen all the time all the time and it's um incredible and it's a way for all of us to grow together right so, yeah you know power you know our energies yeah definitely i feel like i don't know, there's a time when you know, I'd worked at some places where it was like, oh, we have to be secretive and hold all our stuff. And mm -hmm. I kind of like the way it is now with like social media. And there's like this big push for like giving things away and sharing mm -hmm. and like you just give away your knowledge or whatever you can and it'll come back. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like nothing is a secret anymore. You can find out anything on yeah. Google or YouTube. And, it, you know, one of the things I, I read and see a lot, it's like the pie is big enough for everybody to get a piece. You don't have to be like miserly about it. Yeah especially in this area where like, like you said, it's prime to take off yeah. if you can find a cool niche, which you guys really have. And it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also this, like people say like a mi millennial mentality mm -hmm. where you would rather work a job that's meaningful and that you feel you're con a contributing member of society than right. Part um, of a machine. Yeah. And have a better salary. So mm -hmm. people are sacrificing money for like m meaning and. Well, I think know. that goes to like, you know, like retirement isn't, I mean, how, how many generations of people have had retirement really? Yeah. If you think about it, a, a few, two, three, four, maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's not a guarantee, Yeah, you know, and it's, it's, it's getting lesser and lesser. So yeah, it's, why work at why spend your days on something you hate or loathe like mm -hmm. <laughs> hate 80 90 percent of your day your life when you could do something really fun and exciting that yeah. you really care about i mean it's kind of like a no-brainer mm -hmm. when you know the reality is you, you might not be able to retire yeah so you might as well enjoy what you do every day <laughs> you know what i mean yeah that, i mean that's basically kind of like what i've been working on this mm -hmm. whole thing I, you know I, i'm a designer i enjoy designing and I went to grad school to, you know, 
get some more skills and learn some new things. And I think at the end, towards the I finish in August, and towards the end, I'm thinking to myself, like, maybe I don't want another job. Mm-hmm. Maybe I want to do my own thing because for the same reasons. Like, I know I'll care about my own thing more. Yeah. You know? And it's yours. Yeah, exactly. You know, working with clients, especially. Like, I want to work with clients my own way or my mm-hmm. own type of clients. You yeah. know what I mean? It's different when you work for, like, a boss and a client because you have to, like, make the boss happy yeah. and the client happy. And it's like that. Your boss is your client. Right. Yeah. And it's like that that back and forth sometimes. It's, it's very stressful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I kind of want to cut out the middleman sometimes. Yeah. But then beware because the yeah. client. Yeah. Right. <laughs> sometimes so h- nice having a buffer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So what? how do you guys um, deal with clients? Is that Have you found that, that interaction um, – you know, positive for the most yeah. part? Um, so we really started, um, and a lot of our business uh, initially was in the wedding industry. So yeah, I bet. Um, a lot of custom wedding invitations. Um, and through that, the word of mouth sure. grew. And so we, um, like a, about a third of our business is weddings, okay. um, which is great. It's beautiful. And we get to, you know, be a part of some, a, a huge day in somebody's mm-hmm. life and make them something right. really meaningful. But the pressure is really yep. high yep. and the expectations are really high. Sure. Um, so balancing that um, and doing an art form that is not always perfect, you know, printmaking, yep. there's it's m- error is built into the process because everything is done by hand. Yeah. So, but perfection is built into the wedding industry. Uh, so right, 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 right. That balancing act is, is not always easy, but I think what's nice is that our clients, for the most part, come to us because they see us as artists, and so they don't want to just go on a website. Right, and yeah. So th- it makes that conversation a little easier. That I think that's the part I love the most about um, letterpress is like that, like one of a kind, unique. Like each one is a little bit different, yeah. like the way the ink rolls on. You know what I mean? It's I think that's something special, and I think, you know, certain people with like a, a, a good eye and, and a high taste will 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 get that and mm-hmm. want that. But I I don't know. Being a designer, you know what I mean. I always want to get like that. Yeah. I like that that feel of something that's been like handmade and done by a like a craftsman. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It, it, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So now I mean, our clients come in all different areas. So mm-hmm. we're doing like business cards and stationery and then working with other nonprofits. Um, and yeah, it's, it's always different, you know, right. Yeah. Process. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite project that you've done? Um, recently we actually, they're all your favorites, right? <laughs> <laughs> all um, of them. <laughs> it wasn't, we ended up not letter pressing this project, but we designed, um, the a series of posters okay. for the Hartford Farmers Markets. Okay. Um, so the, I think there are seven farmers markets that happen throughout the summer, um, and we s- got to rebrand them. Oh, cool. Um, so it's nice because um, now that we've been doing branding um, and printing in the area for three years, um, we have a clear like mark that mm-hmm. if somebody sees it they're like oh that's a hartford prince design oh cool um and you know that's what you yeah 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 right yep that like instant recognition that brand recognition yeah that's awesome yeah did they consult you with the uh when they didn't they rebrand hartford like the rising star or something like that? oh yeah so that was even before i moved back oh Um, okay so at yeah at some point i mean is I think they're going with Hartford has it as like the motto. Okay, that's a new one. Yeah. Okay, I knew there was like a discussion over like changing the motto yeah. and like it was like the heart was it the heartbeat or something for it a while. It used to and be the rising star. It was the rising yeah. star. Okay. Yeah, which just always feels like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're never gonna get there. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Not quite. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at some point, like, the biggest dream for Hartford Prince is for the state of Connecticut to adopt small state big heart as the motto that'd be awesome yeah. i could see that being like an ad campaign like the california like yeah. on the like vacation california and arnold is on there and stuff like yeah i could see like that in like an ad that would so be just awesome talk about it to everybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> small heart wait small state big heart right mm-hmm. yeah i love yeah. it yeah i think I, yeah i ordered one of the shirts on etsy oh good 
Yeah, I want to get one of the, the Hartford Handsome. Yeah. I'm going to grab one. Pick one up. Those are sweet. Mm-hmm. Who did that one? Um, so that was a designer, um, Krista. Um, so we have a campaign called Hartford Handsome. Okay. That last year, it actually started, um, you should meet these guys. They make pomade. They're okay. called Founders. Okay. Um, and it's two barbers that have a barber shop, I think, in Berlin. Um, but they manufacture pomade, men's hair gel. In See, the like there's so much yeah. weird, like cool stuff going yeah. on that I, you would never know. But like through talking to people like you, yeah. I kn- learn these things. Now it's you'll awesome. have them on your podcast. Yeah. They're so cool. Awesome. Um, so they came up with the hashtag Hartford Handsome when okay. they talk about, you know, their products and, you know, what it is to be. Um, you know, uh, a gentleman in, in the gotcha, area. Gotcha. Um, and so we just thought that that was like the best thing. And, um, we wanted to promote the men in our, um, area because you kind of don't get enough time to like give men the, the spotlight. Um, <laughs> men don't have enough spotlight. <laughs> no, but just like a little, you know, a little, just a little, um, nod to, to like the gentleman. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So we did a two week campaign where we went around the city and interviewed um, and photographed different guys, sort of like street photography, like humans of New York. Okay. Um, yep. And then people voted on Instagram. Oh, that's funny. And then there was a big party at the end. Um, so we'll be doing that in July. Oh, cool. Again. That's fun. Yeah. Not, have you, do you guys do a lot of like social media, like campaigns like that? Like, that was our biggest. Um, and then, you know, Nina, who is the store manager, is always coming up with new things. Because, oh. like, Instagram now is a real um, interesting way for us to find, you know, new um, customers and and it gets so much yep. traction because, like, Facebook is kind of phasing out. Sure, right. And I have n- no idea how to use Snapchat, but apparently... Me neither. I have no idea. <laughs> I heard it's for bad things. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. But, I mean, it just w- seems odd, like, for business, how, yeah, Snapchat would work. But uh, Yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. Maybe I'll take it. I hear Instagram is really good, though. Seminar. I, I'm, like, on all of them. I'm, I'm doing the Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, kind of YouTube. Yeah. Everything. I mean, see what hits. Yeah. But Vimeo. I have a one one video on Vimeo. <laughs> They, w- they have all kinds of restrictions on oh, there. YouTube's okay. much m- freer. Okay. But we're uh, we're like already down to our 20 minutes again. Wow. <laughs> I like it. This is a great show. Yeah. All right. We'll take another break. And we are back. You're really good at this. Oh, no. <laughs> You're a really good speaker. Ugh. You're a great guest. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for yeah. coming on the show. Yeah. This has been awesome. Yeah. We'll I'm have like a 10-year reunion at some point. <laughs> yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> 10 years. Who knows where we'll be? Uh, yeah. What is that? 2025? 2025. Oh, man. Hopefully the we'll future. have flying cars. Yeah. Or hoverboards, at least. I think so. Yeah. Like That'd be sweet. Back to the future in the future. Right. Yep. Yep. That'd be cool. Yeah. Someday. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done this. You've started this from nothing. Um, w- what kind of advice, you know, what... Um, right before that... Would you say what is your like greatest achievement so far with the company? Yeah, um, I think that our greatest achievement so far is um, really this like Love Hartford campaign that we did. Um, it was the first um, project that we took on um, to infiltrate the mm-hmm. city in a really beautiful way and we printed um posters that were there are five different posters in the series um and it was all about living um local loving hartford mm-hmm. eating local loving hartford buying local and it was before this movement you know exploded sure and so to be at the ground level and i walked the streets and i hung up these posters as just like an art um piece 
and uh, installation throughout the city. And that's when it started to click in people's heads that, you know, we have to talk about our city in a different way. We have to connect to our community and we have to do this together. And all the negative energy that surrounds Hartford, like let it go. Right. It's a beautiful place to live mm -hmm. and um, we can support each other. Right. And whether you live in West Hartford or um, Weathersfield or Bloomfield, any we're all in this community and it's they work together. Right. So, you know, just like knowing that um, West Hartford Center complements downtown yeah. and not like that there's this fight right, right. for what's better. And it's so small. Yeah, it's so small. Yeah, and connected. I mean, it's really, right, like it's like four miles from like yeah. here to downtown West Hartford. Yeah. But. Because you see a, a clear, like growing up here, there was always this like clear divide and we kind of have to just like let go mm -hmm. and love our capital city, love our small towns, love our suburban areas and like all of this works together yeah and to stop fighting it right all. right there's some there's definitely like my favorite parts of town definitely like the west end i like the character there yeah i like like not to talk bad but like i like the west end and like elmwood mm -hmm. I, li I live in west harford so like i always like those sections more than i like blueback because they have that like character that yeah like, the new corporate area like doesn't have yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's um and now with the fast track you can just like jump on yep. it and yep i think it's pretty cool yeah what about what do you think your biggest like stumble has been have you f been yeah. like faced with a lot of adversity coming up or has it been um, pretty pretty opening smooth opening the store um was a very intense um experience just because we thought that we would have a store in like five years, 10 mm -hmm. years. And because of this um, uh, grant that opened up, we just went for it. And it, there were a lot of roadblocks. There were a lot of challenges. You know, it, y you have to like make enough product to fill a store. Right, yeah. And, but then to. That's get, overhead and that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's scary. And then to just, like, get the doors open and, like, now have existed for almost two years, is it, like, blows my mind. Yeah, that that's awesome. That we have this. Right. Um, and Do you pinch yourself? Like, I can't believe yeah. this is happening. Yeah. During that time, my sisters produced three children, and I <laughs> birthed a, a store. store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations. You, you have a two-year-old <laughs> store. So beautiful. <laughs> It's getting so big. Oh, so funny. <laughs> I love it in here. I love the uh, the, the color scheme. Thank you. That, like, tealish blue sort of. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I like it a lot. Yeah. Actually, my I have a room in my house. I painted these colors. I have one wall, this this color, and another wall, that, that blue. It's Parker actually pretty Prince. funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> I know. You should open a satellite office. Yeah. I'd love to work here. You guys seem like you're doing so much cool stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, the creative process. And yeah. You can co-work here okay <laughs> let's do it <laughs> that's yeah. so funny so um what advice would you give you know somebody like myself who wants to go out on their own and start their own business like what yeah. would you say to them so this advice is actually advice that somebody else told me um and it just resonated after being a small business owner um and all the craziness that comes with it is um so he owns a paper company called rifle paper okay. they're huge but they've only been around for five years you know they're national like uh, international i don't even know a hundred and some odd employees huge um and the advice is that you're always and never ready for anything and mm. that's kind of how you i approach all things so it's like um let's move a press to bushnell park okay and then you're like oh shit <laughs> what did i just get myself into and you figure it out right so it's you know that um whatever obstacle or you know comes your way that you will always be ready for it and then again you still have to figure it out right yeah <laughs> especially when you're doing it on your own yeah it's just you yeah that's good advice yeah so just tackle 
you know, tackle everything and know that you can accomplish it and that you might not know how to, but you're going to figure it out. Yeah. Or you're going to, ha- you're going to have to do it yeah. anyways, right? Yeah. Now, have you had, um, difficult times with, okay. So when you first started, did you have to do like work? I've always been told this, like sometimes you might have to do work for free in mm-hmm. order to get yourself established. Have you found that that was the case with this or was it, were you able to, to, you know, charge for your products yeah. from the get go? Um, I think we started and had our price point slightly lower and then quickly realized that you have to pay yourself what it is valued and you have to like protect your own time. Right. Um, because or else like people will take advantage yeah. of you from the yep. beginning. And so you know how much your time is valued right. and protect that and protect sure. You know, if you're building a business, you have to protect it and, you know, treat it like your baby. Right. um, Because it's not worth it to to cut to cut anything in the end, um, you know, because how the heck are you supposed to make a living? Right. Exactly. (laughs) And it's funny because I think like being small like myself, I'm my I I do freelance work on the side and. I think a lot of times people will like will expect me to give them breaks a lot of times yeah. and they are, are shocked how much I charge and it's well like it's how much it costs. Yeah. And you know, if you're gonna go somewhere else, you're probably gonna pay more. Yeah. And it's funny how yeah, a lot of times people expect, you know, this, it, it, as far as like design and create creative things like I just press the Photoshop button yeah. and it happens. Like yeah. that's a lot of work that goes that's not only the work that I have to do, but like the years of experience and training that I have behind that, the yeah. machines I have to do this. Like exactly. I think a lot of times people don't don't think of that. Yeah. And I'm sure you, we have all like experienced this is the client that you give the deal to or tries to negotiate you down ends up being the most time consuming. Yep. That's exactly project. it. That's like the 80 <laughs> 20 principle or yeah. whatever. It's like the 80% of your problems come from like the clients that produce 20% of yeah. the revenue. And like, y- yeah. yeah. So yep. once you have a few of those, you learn kind of quickly, but you also have to know who's, who is the right client for you because I, and my sisters sort of fight back because I always say yes. Mm -hmm. And they're more likely to say like, hold on. Right. Yeah. Like, should we do, you know, I think that's part of being creative. We're like people pleasers. Like we want to do good things and help people out. But yet, like you said, you have to protect yourself. Sometimes you can't say yes to everything. So saying no is a good lesson to learn, too. Yeah, when you can afford to. Yeah. For sure. And um, my sister Callie talks about opportunity costs and, like, Mm -hmm. um, knowing when something is worth your time and when it's, you know, the time spent. um, Is that worth the the energy and time? Or should you be actually, you know, when we look at some of our projects, like, um, the work that we're doing in the community and we're putting so much time into it, but it's not actually equaling financial yep. um, it right now. And right. Like yeah. 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 The, so it's like, in, yeah, you're, yeah. you're going to invest in this cause it will pay off in the end. Yeah. Cause it, you know, who knows who, who will see this that yeah. will lead to something else. Yeah. I, that's, that's sort of, what I kind of mean. Yeah. Like yeah. M- maybe I want to get into video production. So mm-hmm. maybe I got to, produce a couple of videos for yeah. li- little to nothing just to get my foot in the door. Yeah. And that, in hopes that, that work that does, especially to build your own confidence and experience. And right. Something new. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. But yeah, this is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I can't believe you guys did that. Where did you get a, a letterpress? Like, how did you find that? Um, so Addie got it in 2009 on the internet from a guy in Illinois and wow. he drove it out here with two type cabinets uh, worth of stuff. and That's so crazy. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> That's why I call it like, the crazy creative. Because, like, yeah. you know what I mean? If I said to my parents, like, oh, I'm going to start a letterpress, they'd be like, you're insane. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty ballsy move. Yeah. Or what the female equivalent of that is, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Ovarian? <laughs> <Would> that <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> uh, oh, man. 
uh, it just got weird. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. No, because we'll just put that on a card and it will like become a There a you go. Thing. There's your next like yeah. line. Yeah. The latest card that I came up with is going to be um, a picture of a squirrel and then it says nuts underneath it. So it goes. Let's yeah, go. I like it. Yeah. It's, it's awesome because like you never know what could be something cool or a cool campaign or a, yeah. a cool hashtag that you yeah. involve people in. It's cool that you have your own platform to do whatever you want. Yeah. That's so like, like well, the, hearing the you talk, I can like press. breathe. Like I'm yeah. just like create, I can feel the creativity. Yeah. Like, man, that must be so And if fun. you ever have a card idea, mm -hmm. let us know. You got it. Yeah. You can yeah. have your own card line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I actually just interviewed um, Jen Jacobs uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And she d she's a, a artist yep. in Hartford, and she does, she does like the, the pasties. Yeah, the pasties and the uh, Bad Bunny yeah. stuff, and yeah. she does her she's own like artwork. She's like BFFs with Miley Cyrus. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's funny because like her artwork is she turns into fabric and makes like um you know her bustier things and mm -hmm. underwear, and, and sh she's friends with we have a mutual friend who's another artist, and he does printmaking. He does these woodcuts. Tim Wengertsman. Okay. So I was, <laughs> I was telling her that they should team up and do like a Tim Wengertsman like line of Ooh. like women's underwear because his stuff is like super gnarly like yeah. punk rock aggressive like these weird figures like vomiting and <laughs> that sounds cool. it's interesting but i was like you guys should team up and do a collaboration line that would be awesome yeah <laughs> see the, you never know the, po the podcasts are like yeah blooming <laughs> yeah hopefully this uh i think this is gonna be a good one yeah definitely cool well you know come to our store um Check out HartfordPrints.com. Um, and then the store is 42 and a half Pratt Street in downtown Hartford. You can't miss it. Turquoise. The big, uh, the heart in front. Yeah. The beautiful heart. And can people follow you? That's, uh, follow us on Instagram at Hartford Prince, on Facebook, on Twitter, not on uh, Snapchat. Um, sorry, Snapchatters. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a great episode. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we can have you on again soon. Yeah. That would right. be awesome. Take it easy.